So we've talked a lot about numeric values, integers, floats, and doubles, and I want to introduce the idea of a character variable in C. Now it turns out that character variables actually are basically just numbers in disguise, but we'll talk about that as we go through these different concepts. We could declare a character using char, like this, and then we give it a name, of course, like any other variable. So I could say care C, and we'll set it equal to a value. So for instance, if I wanted to have a character that was set to the value of A, I would put in single quotes A. Now, very important here is that the character needs to be placed in single quotes. It can't be placed in double quotes, something very important to keep in mind. And I can actually show you this type of idea, right? If I put this into double quotes, it's actually going to cause a problem in C. You'll see when we actually compile this, you'll get this warning that says that we can't convert a care to a care star. Now, this is kind of interesting. Thinking back to pointers, why does it think that this should be a care star? Well, the reason being is because double quotes indicates a string. And a string in C is actually just a pointer to a set of characters. As we were discussing this idea of lists of values in C are really just a pointer to the front of the list. And that's what's happening here when it's trying to do this conversion. So this is why we need to put single quotes instead of double quotes is because double quotes is reserved for strings in C, whereas single quotes is reserved for characters, which is a single character of text, of course. So we could print out this value, of course, right? So we could do printf. To print out a character, we do percent %c, right? So that's the encoding for character. And when I run this, I will see the exact result that I'm expecting, which is the value a printed to the screen, right? That lowercase a. So that's nice and simple. Now, as I sort of mentioned at the beginning, it turns out that characters are actually really just numbers in disguise. The reason being for this is that when we work with values like characters, in reality, they're stored as integer values. And then we use an encoding known as ASCII in this case to convert that number into its corresponding character. Now in C, it's rather unique that we can show this concept very clearly. I can actually print this character as an integer. And when I do this, what will happen is it will print out the ASCII value for it, in this case, 97 for lowercase a. Now this creates a lot of interesting sort of things. Uh, one of the interesting things that comes out of this is if you put a number in here, because it's in the single quotes, it's formatted as a character. And what will happen is you'll get something that isn't really what you expect, right? So you get 50 because 50 is the ASCII for the character two. So it's very important to understand that the character two and the number two are different from each other, right? So that's just something very important to keep in mind here. Now, when we're thinking about this idea of the fact that integers and characters are really the same thing, there are actually some interesting advantages to this. So if we were to start at the uppercase A, for instance, we can actually add to it. So I could do C plus equals one. And what that will do is it will actually take us to the next letter in the alphabet. So that's kind of a fun little quirk about characters in C, right? It takes us to B because A plus one is equal to B right, 65 becomes 66, which is the ASCII for B. And we can actually do a lot of really fun things with this. So like, as an example, I can show you the difference between an uppercase and a lowercase character, for instance. If we take a look at the integer representations of each of these, we'll notice that they're only just a few digits apart from each other. So let me show you that. Uh, oh, and I have to remove that C plus equals one, otherwise this, this won't work. There we go. So let me show you what I mean by that. Uh, I see here, oh, I did print instead of printf. Let's uh, just fix that quick. That will be good to go. So printf. And now when we compile this, we get it working. I do see that we have 65 and 97. Now these two values differ from each other by a value of 32, right? So if we subtract those two numbers, we get 32. And what it turns out is that if we take a an uppercase letter, and we add 32 to it, we actually get its lowercase equivalent. So let me show you that. If I print out both of these characters now, they should both be the same as each other, which would be a lowercase a. And you can see that it does indeed work. So the reason why this is interesting is because if you are given a string that's all in uppercase letters, if you want to convert it to lowercase, you simply add 32 to all of the characters. If you want to convert it to uppercase from lowercase, then you do the opposite. You subtract 32 from each of the values to get that different value. 
So you can see that we actually have a very, you know, sort of clean way of being able to convert between uppercase and lowercase values. And that's just one of the many sort of benefits of being able to represent a character as both an integer and the actual character value. The other thing that's really interesting about this is that it takes us to a lower level of programming, right? It's really showing you more about the actual memory. It's exposing that detail that this isn't actually stored as a character, it's stored as a number. And really the way that you tell C to format it is how it determines whether it's actually a character or a number. And it turns out that we could do something similar like this with integers, right? If I have an integer and it has a value in it, I can actually try to print it as a character. And what it will do is it will take that integer and try to convert it into a character. And the reason why I give you all of these little trivia facts about C is because for one, you might be able to use them in your program to be able to do something, you know, maybe a little bit more efficiently or get a value out with, you know, less lines of code. And the other reason for that is because frankly, you are probably going to run into some issues where you get a weird unexpected result in C. And I want you to have a bit more of an intuition about where those weird results may come from. At some point you may try to print out a character and accidentally print it as an integer, right? So I want you to have that intuition behind, okay, it's really just an integer value. So that's what you may see sometimes. So that just gives you a little bit more of that insight towards that. Now, a few other things that we could do here, uh, inputs is something that we're able to also do with uh, characters, right? So we could take inputs as a character. We could do that using the scanf function, which we, we have seen, but we can also do it in a slightly different way. So if I have a character C, I can use the get care like this. What that does is it gets a character from the actual terminal and it places it in that variable C. And let me just go ahead and print F that value. That way we can actually see that in action. So you'll see with this, when I run this, what will happen is it will sit here and wait. I can input in a character and you see that that just gets printed to the screen. So that shows that it actually does store it. Now, actually, something I haven't tried yet, I think this will be kind of fun. What if we input it in a numeric value? Ah, okay, so if we input it in a numeric value, it actually takes the uh, character version of it. So you see it gives us six as a result rather than the ASCII conversion. So that's something that I just wanted to try there. So it does take in that value. And notice that it only took the first one, right? Get care only gets the first character and nothing else. It ignores everything else in that actual set of values. Now, similar to get care, we can also do put care, which will print a single character onto the screen. So put care is going to also work rather than print F. And that will achieve a similar result where we can print like a single character onto the screen. And you can see that that does generally work. So these are just other like sort of special cases of functions that we already know. Scanf lets us take in an input. We can use that to get a character input, right? Of course, we can do something like scanf percent %c into ampersand %c like this, right? So we could do something like that, but we can also use get care to get the value, similar to how we can print f the character, or we can use put care to print out that character as well. So just different alternatives that achieve a very similar result. And with this, you should now have a pretty good understanding of character data types. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.